explain uh, texturing and shading in Blender. Okay. Uh, from our previous lessons, you have this four spheres here that represents what you see on the screen, assuming you're in a particular tab, right? So right now we're in layout. Layout is your generic window where you just see full screen of what's happening in your scene, okay? And then you can change your viewing into look dev, EV, so on and so forth. This gives you kind of like the final look of your object. However, we have multiple tabs here. If we are modeling, you know, as you can see, there's really no difference between layout and modeling. The only main difference is that this thing is in edit mode. If I go to object mode here, look at layout and modeling. There's no difference, okay? So, sculpting. That's for sculpting, okay? If you want to sculpt here. UV editing, we'll be working on this window. UV editing is uh, how you tell your computer to, uh, uh, oh, I'm just right. uh, how you tell your computer how to wrap that photo in there, right? Texture paint is you painting directly on your model. Shading is when you put your texture in there or your photo. Animation, self-explanatory when you want to animate. Rendering is what you see when you actually finish uh, your work and you want to take a photo of it. Compositing, this is visual effects. Scripting, this is coding. So if you know how to code and there's a feature in Blender that's missing and you think it's important, go ahead and write it. And you'll be able to put that function in here. So these things are just pre-made windows. So everything in Blender I can do in modeling. I just have to open those windows. As you can see here, there's sculpt mode, vertex paint, texture paint. These are basically what those things are. They're pre-made templates for working, but I can just easily convert modeling or layout to mimic those screen and it would be the same. So this is how they made Blender kind of user-friendly by having those in there, okay? So let's talk about shading, all right? So how you put color. We've done this by adding different colors to the ring, but let's go to its main window right here, which is shading. Okay, when you're shading, uh, you're automatically in look depth, so you're on this uh, third sphere right here. Remember, the fourth one is the reality, right? So we'll go here. The reason why we want to start with this because it gives you this nice even lighting, meaning um, regardless where you rotate your camera, you kind of see a welded object, as opposed to when you go to the fourth one, which is reality. It's kind of dark on the side where there's no lights, okay? So good for while you're working, but not your final output. So let's explain shading real quick. So this is your working window where you could view it. This is your node right here. So this is how the industry works when they work with compositing or motion graphics or visual effects. They always work with nodes like so. So this is basically like a flow chart where you connect things to your object, okay? So right here is where you can find your photo. This is your UV edit. They don't make any sense right now and until we watch those videos, of course. Okay, so let's take a look at this. You remember going to your shading tab, right? When you added color to your rings, you notice here that this thing represents this node to be exactly the same. You see it? The base color and the base color is the same. So if I actually click here and change that to blue, this changed to blue and this is also blue because it's the same thing, all right? So everything that we can add here will be affected on this one, so on and so forth, okay? So the point is when we're shading is that we are defining what this object is, okay? If you notice in Toy Story uh, that was released in 1995, back then the technology is kind of limited, so... What they, uh, what they could do, the best that they could do with anything that uh, they produce, everything looks like plastic. They want to make it look like human skin, it looks like plastic. So that's the best thing they could do. So that's why they decided, why not make plastic toys? Hence, Toy Story, okay? So your shader defines your surface, okay? In Maya, they have, or 3ds Max, or other programs, they have so many shaders. Okay, same thing in Blender right here. As you can see, what we're using is called the Principal BSDF. What this one is, it's a super shader where it combines all the shaders so you don't have to worry about uh, picking a shader just to make it look like paper. Everything here is 
given to you, okay? So basically, a shader defines what the object is, okay? So if I, you want to make this look like plastic, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> By default, everything looks like plastic, okay? So let me just get another object here just so that we can see some shininess and whatnot. So I'm going to put a sphere here, move it here. I'm going to right click it, shade smooth, kind of like what we did last time. It doesn't have a shader, as you can see, because it's a new object. When I click on a cube, it does come with one already. So I'm going to click this one. And then in the shader tab right here, I'm going to click new. As you can see, it mimics right here. Okay. Let's take a look at our shader real quick. We have roughness right here. We talked about this from last week also. So if you make it very rough, you lose the shininess of it. If you lessen the roughness, it almost becomes like a glass ball. All right, so that's roughness right there. Okay? The other thing that defines what your object should be is metalness. Okay? So there's only uh, two objects on this planet. It's either it's metal or non-metal or dielectric, okay? So when it's zero, you don't want a metal object. When you drag metallic to one, you want it as a metallic object. That's all, it's very simple, okay? So let's say this ball is now a metal. Roughness, how shiny is that metal? Very shiny, like chrome. If I increase that, it's like brush metal. Let's say aluminum brush metal. So depending on what you wanna do, that will define the object's uh, property, okay? So this is only to define what it is, okay? Then we can put a skin to it that makes it look like more realistic, okay? So let's say we want to make a wooden crate. You probably don't want to crank up your metallic value to one on that because you want it to be wood, so that would be zero. Does that make sense? Okay, so your roughness also. You want this wood, but you don't want it looking like it's varnish or clear coated. Then you're not going to be lessening your roughness. You're actually going to be increasing it so it's not very shiny. Okay, so that's all there is to it regarding your shading. Okay, uh, you define what your object is. Once you define that, you then uh, give it a color if you want to, or you give it a skin or a texture. Texturing is very similar to wallpapering, your wall in your house, okay? Let's say you spend 500 bucks on a really expensive white paint, okay? That's great, you painted it white. Now that you wanted to add a photo on top or a texture called wallpaper, what happens to the white paint? It just gets covered up. It's the same thing here. So you could spend all your time defining the color only to put a photo on top, then the color disappears, okay? So let me start a new scene right here where we just get a cube, all right? And then we're gonna add a texture to this, okay? But first, let's go to our shading. So I'm gonna go to the shading tab, okay? Right here, and um, this is gonna be a wood crate. So I already downloaded a crate texture. So all you have to do is go to your browser and type in crate texture, C-R-A-T-E, texture, and you can then download it, okay? So I download it, I'm gonna click here on my downloads, and let's take a look at a photo. There it is, crate texture. It simply looks like this uh, crate photo right here, uh, one-sided only, and this is what I'm gonna use. But before we use that, let's define this one first. So we're gonna be using wood, right? So what I'll be using here is, um, let's define this one. So that's going to be wood. So my roughness has to be a little bit higher. I don't want that wood looks like it was dipped in uh, Vaseline, okay? So I'm going to increase that. Definitely not metallic. What about all the other options? I'm just going to leave those alone because that itself, right, they're making it rough, gives it a property that's not looking like plastic already. Okay, what about base color? It doesn't matter, we're gonna be using a texture, all right? So add a texture, you simply click and drag your photo in this working workflow, uh, node workflow in Blender right here. So uh, this particular one, it's an image texture, and when you drag it, it wraps it on this holder. If you can see right here, I can change that texture by simply clicking browse right here, and Blender would ask me, 
hey, what do you want to change that to? So let's say I pick that. I don't know what that is, but I changed it to that one, all right? So, or I can put it back to the crate texture, which is on downloads. Let me find it. Uh, can't even find my own uh, downloads here. I'm just going to delete that and drag it. That's a lot faster than finding it, okay? So what we want to do is replace our base color with that. Okay, kind of like make that blue, base color, that base color. So you see this yellow node dot on the texture. If you click and drag this to the base color, connect it, Blender now will use that photo as the skin. But we do have a problem. Blender doesn't understand how you want to wrap that photo around this object. Okay? So that's when we need to do our UV editing. Our UV editing simply tells Blender how to wrap that photo. Okay? So I'm going to go to UV editing tab right here. I'm going to switch. And as you can see, it splits it into this one. This is our UV working environment. This is our photo, and this is how Blender decided to use it. Okay? So what it did, it unwrapped a cube. I don't know if you've done paper craft before, but you can see it right here. If I connect all those edges, put this at the top, I get a cube, right? So we can't be using this particular kind of T unwrapping of this cube here. What we want to do is unwrap this into a cube projection. So let's first see what that looks like by clicking on the third view right here, okay? You have to be in edit mode in order to do your UV unwrap. I'm going to click on edit mode right here. Make sure that I have all the sides selected. Okay? All the sides selected by pressing A on my keyboard shortcut. Okay? I'm going to turn on my screencast. Okay? So when you press A, it selects everything. You double click A, it deselects everything. Okay? I'm going to press A to select all. Or you can do the classic way, click that, shift click, move your mouse, shift click. All right, you can do it the long way, doesn't matter, okay? Or press A to make sure that everything is selected. Once that is all selected, you have to unwrap it. To unwrap it, you have to press U, as in unwrap, okay? I'm gonna press U on my keyboard, and then it asks you, hey, how do you want to wrap that photo around this object? Well, it's a cube, so it better be cube projection here. So if I click cube, voila, there it is. It's applied on all the sides of the cube. Does that remind you of a game asset that you just blow up and whatnot? Yes. So, low polygon modeling and texturing. Okay, so there's that. really simple and how you can add your texture to it okay so let me stop the recording here so that we can jump to the next one